um, for people who eat a whole food plant-based diet, and part of their whole food plant-based diet, they eat avocados, they eat olives, they eat raw seeds like pumpkin, chia, flax, sesame, sunflower, hemp. They eat raw nuts like almonds, walnuts, pecans, macadamians, Brazil nuts, um, cashews. Uh, what do you think about people who eat whole, whole, whole food plant fats? So those four items, avocados, olives, raw seeds, and raw nuts. Is this something that they uh, should eat? Freely and regularly, or because it has fat in it, do you feel like they should limit it? What are your thoughts about raw plant fats? Uh, well, we, fats are not evil. We need them. Uh, our skin cells are made of fats. Our hormones are made of fats. Uh, every cell membrane in our, our tissues has a little envelope of fat. We need some fat every day. Uh, and I like the list that you gave uh, because they were all uh, whole plant foods. Uh, I'm uh, not a big fan of refined vegetable oils. Uh, and it's, and I tell people, if, yes, get your fats, but get it out of avocados and walnuts and olives, etc. not out of glass bottles. Uh, and you're, you stayed on the whole food side in that selection. Uh, so it comes down to a matter of quantity. And too much of anything is, is not good. And uh, uh, the Polyan, you start when you're if you're sitting in front of the TV and you're shoveling in handfuls of, of almonds or, or sunflower seeds. Now you're getting a lot of omega six fatty acids, and that may start tipping the balance towards a more, more pro-inflammatory state in, in your tissues. There now there's questions about how much of the unsaturated fats uh, to eat before the tissues get a little unstable. Are you uh, might you be increasing your cancer risk uh, if a carcinogen lands on those membranes? Uh, what does that do to your blood clotting mechanism? Um, the, are these people more prone to serious bleeds? Uh, again, excess of anything is not good. I mean, animals know it. Uh, uh, if they come upon you know, some fatty foods, eat so much, then, then they move on. They don't sit there and just gorge, as, as far as I know. Um, so... Um, I tell people, you know, nuts are fine, seeds are fine, but hold it to a small handful a day uh, and make them raw nuts rather than roasted. I'm a big walnut fan. It's got the most omega-3s. You know, one small handful. And, well, to eat them one at a time. Don't be an unconscious shoveler and just you know, sit in front of the TV and just shovel in uh, handfuls of cashews. Uh, you know, turn the TV off. The, the, the cashew grower took, took a lot of trouble to grow those nuts and harvest them and get them to the market and get them into your hand. Ah, you know, a cashew and uh, put it in your mouth, and chew it up and let it flab over your tongue and inhale the, the aroma of it, put a little under your hair, under your finger. You know, just be with the experience of cashew eating, you know, but slow down and, 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 and be a nut eater for that. 20 seconds, uh, we'll swallow it, mm, I think I'll have another. And uh, and just be present with your food and you will you will only eat one or two handfuls and it'll be enough. So there, you know, again, with all these, it starts getting into the the, the magic amulet uh, silver bullet. You know, if we just have enough asahi berries and we have enough Himalayan sea salt and enough of the magic avocado or, or you know, the, the, this nut or that nut, then we'll be healthy. Uh, but, you know, Dr. Colin Campbell wrote this wonderful book called Hold, W-H-O-L-E. And his main point, he's screaming from the mountaintops, is uh, you'll drive yourself nuts if you just zero down on the, you know, this particular ratio of omega-6 to 3s and how much of this trace mineral is that. He says it's the whole food stream. It's the quality of the whole river of nutrients that's flowing through you. Like they're that, Gorilla, you know, it's all the nuts and the fruits and the seeds and everything they're eating that's going through his digestive system. I've never had a gorilla in the office complain. I don't know what to eat, Doc. You know, they, they don't know what to eat. They've got their whole food stream pretty together. And, uh, and we need to do that. You know, and too much of anything, too much uh, sugary foods, and that is not good. Too much fatty food, not good. Uh, eat that whole balanced food stream. Some days you'll eat more, some days you'll eat less. Very soon, that's okay. Uh, it all kind of straightens out in the gut. 
but as long as they're whole plant foods that grew out of the ground and you're keeping your weight on, there's a big variety of them and you're covering your B12 needs, relax uh, and uh, don't go overboard in, in any of these, uh, any one or, or more of these uh, uh, high fat, high nutrient food groups. I, I love the term unconscious shoveling. I am going, I wrote it down, I'm going to use it. <laughs> I think I used to be an unconscious shoveler, which is why I used to be fat. Probably that had something to do with it. Um, I, I agree with you. And I think um, there's a there's a little bit of individual um, attention that you have to pay to people. When you, there are some people who are not capable of eating a handful of nuts, okay? There are some people who can't eat a cookie, all right? I, I have a good friend who has a box of chocolate in her bedroom closet. At, at, and it lasts for a year. I don't understand that because if I had a box of chocolate in my bedroom closet, I would get up and eat it until it was gone and it would not be a year, right? So so there's a person who can have chocolate in the house. I'm a person who doesn't do so well with chocolate in the house. And so what I'm getting at is for some people, you can say, look, you have those things, but I like you don't like it in oil form, but you know, put some walnuts in your salad or in your stir fry and, and okay to have some cashews. There are people who do well with that. And then there are other people who need a different kind of rule to follow if they choose to. And, and it goes something like this. How about you eat those things when they are part of a recipe, all right? So you're making a uh, vegan mac and cheese to take to the church potluck on Sunday and um, it calls for cashews and you make your cheese sauce from cashews and you eat cashews that way. Um, you look at a great stir fry recipe in somebody's book, oil free stir fry that says chopped, uh, you should chop up some nuts and put them on the top of each serving. Um, you know, so, so those are, some people do better with that kind of a rule because it's real specific. And, um, and this goes to something that we talk a lot about, our dietitians do, our, our health professionals do with our clients. And that is that we try to be as prescriptive as we can because when people are, there are some people, and I think and maybe most people actually, when they're standing at the kitchen counter and negotiating with themselves on what they can have, that usually doesn't go so well as opposed to saying, okay, the rule I've chosen to follow based on what I've seen is, is this. And um, so that can sometimes be helpful. D different personalities require different kinds of rules to govern their behavior, but to the extent that they can establish a, a rule and stick with it, person that can eat a handful of walnuts, terrific. Another person might have to say, my rule is going to be walnuts are in dishes that call for them. And other than that, and you know what the great thing is, the bulk section of the store lets you buy a quarter cup of nuts to put in your recipe. So you don't have to take home the bag if you're a person who can't be in the same vicinity as a bag of nuts. So that might be helpful too. So just to clarify, if I was saying what's the right amount of cigarettes to smoke in a day, you would both say zero. So in terms of avocado seeds and nuts, is it okay to have two avocados with lunch and two avocados with dinner? Is it okay? Like what is your, you know, people like these things. They, they like to use it. People have big green salads. They put in cucumbers, they put in red peppers, they put in lots of greens and they want to put in avocado. Are you saying no problem, avocados is the same as a cucumber. You're saying, no, it's a high fat item and you should limit it to one a day, two a day, five a day. Same with seeds, nuts, um, olives. Like what, what, what are you saying in terms of limitations or is there no limitation if you're not overweight? Uh, I think everybody can handle a half an avocado a day. Uh, I, don't, I, don't think, I think that's certainly within the safe range. And as I said, uh, a small handful, half a cup of, of nuts or seeds um, uh, should be safe for everybody. And um, same thing, half a cup of olives, if you, if you really want to throw them on a salad there. But keep it in that range, two pounds of olives, two pounds of anything is too much. And the same thing, don't, don't be even two avocados a day. Uh, uh, you know, you may notice anything initially, but you have to consider what, what microbes are spawning in your gut. Well, what's, what are you doing to the inside of your arteries for a few hours uh, after all the saturated fat runs through? Um, you know, it's part of the insults that, that can wind up uh, by an intemperate lifestyle. So uh, uh, if you're looking for a number, half an avocado a day uh, and, a, and, a, and anywhere between a quarter of a cup to a, a small handful of nuts and seeds, uh, they'll keep you on the safe side there. 
Yeah, I think I agree. I think it's again personality wise. Can people have avocados in the fridge and not have them every day? Um, can people have nuts and not eat them every day? So a little bit of the personality is involved, and and I think um, a part of the confusion comes from um, some people. You mentioned earlier, and I thought this is a really important point that you made, Dr. Klepper, about not assessing, not attributing magical properties to food. Like if we just eat enough of this food, it's magic. We don't have to worry about anything else. And if you eat this food, you know, eat blueberries, prevents cancer. Well, there are not enough blueberries on the planet to keep some people with some risk factors and some diets from getting cancer, right? So blueberries aren't magical foods. They're great foods to include in your diet. So to a certain extent, um, I see these articles that say, you know, 10 superfoods for preventing this or that and avocados there. So people go to the store, they buy five avocados and they say, what am I going to do with these things? Well, I'll have avocado toast for dinner. Then I'll put some avocados in my um, in my salad, and then I'll, you know, what I'm saying. So, so the if you just get away from the idea that any of these things have magical properties, and and you start to just look at including them in the diet, and, and you know, a long time ago when soy was like the controversial thing, it still is in some circles, but that seems to have settled down. And I, I made a comment at a conference one time: What if every food required that level of deliberation? Okay, so it seems like I've been buying broccoli a lot. Is it too much broccoli? I don't know. I ate it four times last week. How much broccoli can you have in one serving? Is there too much sulforaphane in your diet? You know, we never have those discussions about other foods, you know. I've been on a, and, and many people do this, uh, particularly if you are a fan of far, farmer's markets, you're eating more of a certain food at certain times of the of the year and that sort of thing. And we just don't have these discussions about how much of something. We have to be a little more conscious because these foods are higher in fat. But I think the um, intentionality of, oh gosh, I better eat some of this stuff because I need it for health, takes it too far.